So what scares you? What scares, what makes you kind of sweat in the palms a bit and your hair gets all messed up and you get a little flush in the cheek and you find yourself trembling and you try to hide it but you can't hide it? What scares you? What makes you afraid? You all know that I am afraid of flying in airplanes. We've discussed this before. There's no need going into it more now, except I was just thinking recently about how not only is airplane travel inherently scary, but they go to great lengths at the beginning of a flight to remind you of how dangerous it is. (laughs) In the event that the plane bursts into flames, please hold on to your seats. In the event that we land in water in the North Atlantic and hit an iceberg, please use a life vest under your chair. In the event that there's no air left on planet Earth, use this little tiny plastic thing that's going to come down and keep you alive for four more minutes while you say your prayers. (laughs) It's horrible. These people, they're awful to me. I'm also, I have a, a related fear of heights. Thank goodness our pulpit here is not so far off the ground. Have you been to churches where the pulpit's like way up there in the sky and they, they have to wear a harness to go up there? <laughs> That's how I feel when I go to Itasca State Park or other places where they have that fire tower that you can go up. You know what I'm talking about? Fire, you can go up at the forest. You can see the forest. The top. That's what the sign says in the bottom. Go up this little ladder here and you can see the entire forest. And stupidly, I do it. I mean, it's fine at the beginning. You just you get on the little steps, and you walk up, and they have a little handrail. And they go up, and there's the trees above you, and there's some birds singing. And then they go a little higher, and then the, the trees branch out. And then you go a little higher. And all of a sudden, all I know is that I am holding on to the steps of the ladder, crying like a baby, Mommy, come get me now. And I'm, I'm just, just sweating and crying and holding on. And all I see, you, know, you see the forest. Well, no, all you see is the step in front of you and you're just shaking like a dead person. It's terrifying. I hate it. Fear. Fear makes us like dead persons. Verse 4, for fear of the angel, the guards shook and became like dead men. What do you fear? What makes you shake and tremble and grasp like a dead person? Think about the news of the last few years and how many horrible things have happened in this world because of fear. Would the Russians have invaded the Ukraine if the Russians were not afraid of the Crimean Peninsula becoming pro-European and pro-Western? Are not these Russian actions motivated out of a political fear? Would Assad have attacked his own people as they sought a more open and more liberal government if he was not afraid for his life, and for his power. Think about how many shootings happen, how many people are murdered for fear, for someone defending their life. Think about the news when you hear about someone shooting into a a car full of teenagers because he thought they were gang members. Fear. When we are afraid, we become like dead people. Fear kills us. Now you know by now where I'm going with the sermon, and perhaps if you're smart, you're thinking to yourself, but Andy, pastor, be realistic. There are things in the world worth being afraid of. 
political concerns, crime concerns, the debt, the environment. These are legitimate things to be afraid of. Be realistic. We can't live in hope and joy all the time. We have to protect ourselves. Be realistic. This theology and this faith and this religion is this pie in the sky stuff. It doesn't apply to our lives. But I want to ask you this question about being realistic. Is there anything more realistic than the cross of Jesus Christ? I think about that cross. I think about how that cross was once a tree in the forest, growing in the sunlight, when someone came along with an axe and had to cut that tree down. I think about realistic when I think about how that fallen tree was brought to some mill and some carpenter had to mill that tree and turn it into planks of wood. I think about realistics when those planks of wood were cut into human-sized proportions. I think about realistics as those planks of wood were assembled and tied together with rope and turned into an instrument of death and torture. I think about realistic when they took Jesus Christ and nailed him to that cross. That's realistic. There is nothing more realistic in this world than the cross of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ faced this very real, tangible cross. He faced this cross not with violence, not with defense, not with fear. Not because he was afraid. He faced this cross not out of logic of death, but the logos of love. He faced the cross with faith. Jesus Christ knew what the cross was, and he faced it, and he died. And they put his body into that tomb. We, in our fears as individuals, we, in our fears as a culture, as a country, as a human species, we, in our fears, are guarding that tomb. We are guarding the tomb of a dead man when we live our lives according to fear. When we tremble and shake and worry and act with distress, when we arm ourselves for fear of the person who breaks into our house, when we act with violence against other people because they might hurt us first, we are guarding that tomb with a dead man in it. And then one day... These women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, went to see this tomb. The week was dawning. The Sabbath was over. There was a great earthquake. And they went to the tomb and they looked. And it turns out that that tomb that we guard with our fear and our violence is empty. Not only is it empty of the body of Jesus Christ who faced death with faith and love and justice, but it is empty of our bodies as well. For in our baptisms we are baptized into Christ, and with Christ we are raised from death, and we live because he lives. We are guarding an empty tomb. Don't live according to fear. Live according to love. Live according to faith. Live according to awe. I would climb up that awful tower in the forest, shaking with fear like a dying person. And finally, after several minutes of hyperventilation, I would manage to stand up, holding on to that railing, looking out over that wonderful northern Minnesota forest, over those pine trees. You've been there. Looking out over the beauty of God's creation, struck with awe. 
Perhaps you've gone to the edge of the Grand Canyon and walked out to the very, very precipice and looked down and seen the immensity of that open space and felt the power of empty places, felt the power of empty tombs. Perhaps you've come to the edge of the forest looking in and seeing the wonders of the Garden of Eden that surrounds us. On Easter Sunday, we come to the risen Lord. And like dead men raised, we fall at his feet and we grasp them and we cry and we worship as living human beings delivered from our fears and delivered from our death to life with Christ. This is the good news of the gospel. He died that we might live. Amen.